just how important is meal frequency, if at all, with regards to body composition? And this is a question that I got asked recently from a client of mine via social media and they're not concerns but maybe their thoughts around they would eat every maybe three to four hours in a day and then the majority of their food would come at the end of the evening. So their question was around is this is there any issues with doing it this way? Now fortunate for us we have quite a few studies that have looked into the effects of meal frequency on body composition and notably one of the, the bigger studies that was done by um, Brad Schoenfield, Alan Arrogan and James Krieger looked at this exact process and they did a, a, a meta-analysis so basically they pull all of the relevant studies and then from that they can then find which ones are um, able to be included in this meta-analysis so they pulled I think 320 odd studies that could be included and from that they got it down to 15 which were then looked at in this review and then they could then examine those and look into detail around whether having more or less frequent meals would aid body composition. Now this all kind of comes about because people have the thought that if you were to eat smaller, more frequent meals, then that will somehow speed up your metabolism somehow. Uh, the, the words, you know, set it on fire, burn it, make things burn faster, um, come, to, to, come to mind. And that is purely because of people thinking that the thermic effect of food, if they were to eat more and eat more often, would then help them to burn more. However, that's completely negating the uh, energy balance equation. So we still need to be within a calorie deficit in order to burn body fat uh, over a consistent period of time. And the same for building muscle. However, they also would look at protein intakes as well in, in um, accordance with this to see whether an effect of having regular protein feedings throughout the day might have a more thermic effect in terms of its um, body composition effects because protein being the highest form of thermic effect how much that would impact the results as well. Now with these 15 studies they looked at changes in body mass, fat free mass, fat percentage and fat mass changes and if you were to look at the results you would say that yes higher frequency meals has a significant effect on our body composition so we should be eating more frequently however when you delve into the details in these in these studies that's because of one study that had an anomaly in terms of its results which then throws off the rest of the of the readings so we have to look a little bit deeper at why the results are saying this this then cast doubts over the that study because if you were to take that study out of all the other ones it then shows that there is no difference between whether you're having a higher frequency or lower frequency meal timings. So what can we kind of get from this analysis? Well, one big area that's really difficult to monitor, especially in terms of any nutritional studies, is what actually people are doing in terms of what they're eating. So we can't really know for sure what the composition was of those meals that they're eating and you know what really what amounts they're eating at certain times it's very very difficult to measure that in a study so that is always the one confounding sort of variable in these kind of things and also as i mentioned before that one study that threw everything out so what they did was they went through and they then removed one study at a time to see if it made any difference and when they did that they did come up with the conclusion that meal frequency is largely irrelevant when it comes to body composition. Another confounding variable is the fact that this was done in sedentary populations so we're not looking at active um, populations in terms of people who are already trained so that could have some impact in it and also the fact that we aren't really looking at the ones that have a higher protein intake and whether having a higher protein intake in that specific study had an extra impact on the, the thermic effect of their results. Now given all of those different factors and the, 
the thought that if you were to look at it from just a glance, you would say, yes, actually meal frequency does help with improved body composition. But if you look into the details, you'll see that it's actually a lot more complicated than that. It doesn't actually show that. Now more research is obviously needed. And also we're missing kind of like the key fundamental thing here, which is adherence at the end of the day. So if someone can adhere better to their set structure on more frequent meals, then that surely is a good thing to get them to where they want to be. The same could be said for someone who adheres better having less meals per day. So that should be really where the focus comes down to, not the fact of you need to eat X amount of meals per day. So again, hopefully this has made sense. Any questions at all regarding this meal frequency, anything along those lines, please let me know, send me a message and I'll always get back to you.